Hey YouTube, it's Maddie the Empty Nest Grabber. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by. Today I gathered together everything that I need in order to um, swatch and um, label and catalog one ink. This ink, which is uh, from the last year of uh, the new releases, but it's like not even a new ink, but I didn't get it initially and I decided I wanted to have it in my collection. And it's been sitting around and I really need to get it swatched out and put away. But as you can see, the thing that I do is so lengthy and cumbersome and time consuming. And when I do it for you um, here on screen, that's after some of this stuff has been pre-prepped. So let me know if you think I'm crazy. I kind of think I'm a little crazy, but I'm already into this, so I am gonna stick with it. So I took, grabbed just one of my inks, and this one is, Fired brick, and I label each side and swatch the ink. So I don't know if uh, you ever heard of this. It used to be common, I think, um, for people to store their inks upside down. Sort of makes sense with gravity. Some people say it doesn't make any matter. Do it if you feel like. But that's how I started doing it, so I'm going to continue so at least these inks will be uniform. So when I'm done, I will have a Distress ink with the four sides labeled and swatched and a Velcro piece on the back with a foam blender. Um, I do have some of the dome foam blenders. I haven't switched them over because... Uh, I'll have to see how they fit in my storage, but I can use them if I want. As you know, these guys are interchangeable, so it doesn't matter if I don't keep it on there or not. And I do sometimes use those, so they're there. I thought I'll leave them, and I have the, the domes if I want them. Okay, so this is the guy that I'm going to work on today. So the labels will go on upside down to match. I have a foam and that's something I'll probably do at the end with Velcro um, which I will never buy again um, once that one is done because Dollar Tree carries Velcro and I don't imagine there's much difference there. So I'm going to put those aside and show you what this crazy mess is about. So this is going to be where I swatch my ink. I do use a stamp positioner for that. I keep the stamp that I use in here. It's a little butterfly. This is for a different swatching that I do and I keep them both here. And then I will put a label on that I made with my label maker, which is right here. I'll show you in a second. So the color is rustic wilderness and I do put that it's distress oxide because when I am looking at these swatches so here's the label maker I use the brother don't need that anymore I just wanted to show you when I do make the swatch it goes into this book so I can look at the color and compare them for when I'm working on a project and uh, decide which color I would like to use. I know it's a crazy amount of ink. Shouldn't be buying ink, right? I know, you're right about that. Where were you when I needed you when I was shopping today? Anyway, it'll probably go on this page, this rustic wilderness, and we'll see how Ridiculous it was for me to add this color to what I already have. But um, when this swatch is done with that label, it'll go somewhere 
in here. So we put that aside. First thing I usually begin with is the labels. So this part, the swatching of the color and uh, the label. I'm just gonna put that back where it goes. And uh, these are pieces that I just cut. Um, missing one, huh? Looks like I'll only be doing three on camera. Oh no, I have all four. So these are just pieces of cardstock that I cut out to fit. And I already pre-made the labels. And this is clear so that when I'm ready to put the label on, it can go right over the swatch. So the first thing I do is I grab my Xyron and I put these pieces in. And pull them through. And this way, they will be a sticker. I won't have to figure out how to adhere them to my, um, my to my stamp pad. No uh, glue, nothing messy. This pretty much makes it easy peasy. You put it in the top, you slide it out the bottom, and I will have one swatch for each side. So we're done with that. Just give it a little rub. And I have recently found a much easier way that I like to swatch these. So I'm gonna pull this off right here. And if you know the Xyron, you know that now these all four are um, stickers, which is just exactly what I would like. This is trash, we get rid of that. And uh, going to grab a little tool to help me out. I pretty much think I use a little tool when I do this. And uh, it's such a tedious process. You would think that um, it would keep me from buying too much ink, but I assure you that hasn't happened. So I got a couple of tools in case I need them, but I'm just going to open my ink, take my swatches, bam, drop that color right on, flip it around, Drop that color right on. So, there are my swatches. Give you a closer look while we put them aside to dry. And uh, so, since this is such a lengthy process, I can move on to something else and come back to these when they're dry. So, we'll put them aside right there. We have a little something to wipe the table down with and move on to the next part. And what I believe I'll do next is just put this label aside for the moment and uh, get started with my swatch. So I'm just gonna turn this to me so I can see that I'm doing it properly. This is um, Stamp Positioner. It is the uh, Stamp Perfect. And I've been using it for years since it came out. Pretty happy with it. This is a sticky pad and it's on top of the mouse pad that comes with it. And you use that mouse pad when you're using a um, when you're using a clear stamp. That stamp used to be clear, but since I've been using it for my swatching, it has been well, well used and loved. And so I think I'll give it a little wipe. It's just a little butterfly. It's the same butterfly that you saw inside um, 
the swatch book. Use the same one every time. And I just wanna make sure I have so many times thought that I cleaned my stamp and yet, if it's a light color, I would see something dark coming through. And, oh, this is such a long and tedious process that the last thing you wanna do is do it again. So I'm hoping not to do it again. So for those of you who are familiar with the stamp positioner, you know you just put your stamp down where you feel you would like the image to be. And if it, um, if the image comes out properly, you're good to go. And if you feel you missed a spot or missed a few spots, you can just stamp it again. So I'm going to close the door, pick up my stamp, and ink it up. This should be nice and juicy as it is a relatively new ink pad. So that's the good part about making swatches. You're pretty much, for the most part, using a stamp that's pretty juicy. If you just bought it, hopefully it's not dried out, right? So let's wipe some of that excess off. Take our little pressure tool. So there's a little um, Yankee Candle cover that I have made into a little shaker pressure tool. And I don't know if it works better than my fingers or not. I generally use my fingers and also um, the pressure tool as well. And uh, I think when I just use one, either my fingers or the pressure tool, the image does not come out as well. So let's see what we got. And we stuck, we stuck. Hmm, so that came almost perfect, I would. Like a little bit more ink. So, let's see if uh, if that went back in the same place. Not sure because it did move, but I tried to align it where it was by using that corner. And let's see if that worked for us. So first the fingers. And I know actually because I'm impatient and don't wait to see if the ink evens out on its own, it may have been just fine. But I generally tend to double ink all my swatches and I pretty much know that when I'm looking through them. So... Yeah, that's pretty sticky, but looks like it came out just fine. So I'll let you take a look. There's my swatch. And I'm gonna peel that off. And if you have this um, particular sticky mat, and it's, it's a little bit newer to me. Um, Jennifer McGuire recommended it last December or so. Not sure if I like it better than the Sizzix one that I was using prior. And I may go back to those paper. They pretty much weren't as thick and didn't tend to stick to this end. So my swatch is done. I'm gonna wipe off my stamp and I will leave it in here because I never ever have to look at it, look for it rather. So that is pretty handy. Um, my stamps for my swatching are always in this um, stamping tool. So uh, if I can make things easy on myself, I'm all for that all the time. So I'm gonna put the other swatching stamp there and cover that back up to keep the sticky and not have these guys stick to it. 
and let's uh, say goodbye. Thank you, Stamp Perfect. You did well. Let's close up our ink. Put aside our pressure tool and see about adding our stickers. Now, I don't know if they're completely dry, but dry enough. So I'm just going to add each one to the side. And I usually have to fiddle with it some to get it in a relatively central spot. I am not a perfectionist. It could be um, close as good for me. So that's what it looks like. Close enough. Let's grab another one. So I just pull it off. It's already a sticker. And add it to the ink. Let's see, does that look good? And I try not to press it down until I feel as if it's in a good enough spot for me to be satisfied with it. Sometimes it puts itself down and I say, okay, close enough because I'm not going to fight with it and make another one. My eyes are not as good as they used to be, and that's really the problem. I haven't been able to see it properly, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. And that's edge number two. Moving along. We were, oh, this side has got ink all over it already. I don't want to keep it there forever by trapping it under a sticker. So I'll just do the next side while that dries. And let's see how good that is. A little bit over more. That looks good enough for me. Another one. Last but not least. We add it. Too far over. A little bit more. And I think that's good enough. Is it? One more. How do you feel about that location? Little diagonal. Sometimes I just get too fiddly for my own good. And look, one of the edges didn't get snipped, which is the way I usually like it. It snipped this little guy, right? There. Okay, so now we've got our four color, four uh, sides all swatched. This way I don't have to think about which way I put it away. Now I have to add my labels. Look at this, I'm all green, I'm all green. 
Let's not get that everywhere. So very me to be all green. And let's dry off before we get more all green. I think this one might be a little bit too long. I don't know if I trimmed it properly. Let's check and see. Yeah, this one needs one more trim. Eh, there we go. Okay, so this is a label I made on the label maker. It says Rustic Wilderness. It's already a sticker. You just peel off the back. And what I tend to do is peel off one side and um, not stick it down fully and pull off the bottom until I like where the placement is. So I try to remember to place it at least so that I can read it when it's sitting upside down. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, then I pull off the second release paper, if possible. And check my placement again. Because I like it to be somewhat centered. None of them are perfect. Perfect is not a thing, but somewhat is a thing, and I do try to get it there. Hmm. Again, my eyes are playing tricks on me. This must be so much fun for you to watch. So have you tried doing this? Is this something that you do with your inks? Do you try to um, label them and categorize them? I think there's probably, um, I think there's probably, um, an already printed out label by Ranger, which would take about 30 seconds. And if I had half a brain, I would be doing that. And yet, here we are. So, let's see. Okay, there we go. Another one bites the dust. Feel free to fast forward if you don't want to watch this tedious, tedious process. But for me, I have to do it, so I got to be here. Um, I don't mind if you meet me at the end. And when you do, if you make it to the end, I wish you would tell me what your process is for organizing your inks. Do you swatch them? Do you label them? Do you have um, a swatch book like I use to decide which ink is gonna work for your project? I kind of been using that swatch book a bit lately, a bit more lately, because I put it in a different spot. That ever happened to you? You put something in a different spot and then you remember to use it. Like I pulled it out of where it used to be stored. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh yeah, I should check which ink I want. I don't have to use the ink that's just closest to me right this minute. I could, you know, pick up an ink that is, you know, a few inches away, heaven forbid, a few inches away. And uh, that may be a color that I'm happier with. So, um, let me know if that's something, oh goodness, I put that on upside down. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to redo that one. Ah, I don't want to, I don't want to. 
I, I am just not happy about that at all. Not happy. Let's see. Can we flip it and fake it? Let's see. Gonna take some rustic wilderness. Here we go, problem solving on the job. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Put a little of that underneath. Wipe the excess. Oh, goodness. So let's make sure we put it back the right way, which is upside down. And see if I can make that work. I need more ink. Need more ink because I grabbed some ink off certain spots. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. That's what I'm saying. Woo. Of course I put one on upside down because I'm on camera. And how would it be if it all worked out? It wouldn't be me, that's for sure. Wouldn't be me. So here we are, fiddling with a ridiculous label that needs to be put on upside down because of something I read, you know, 15 years ago and started uh, organizing that way whenever oxides first came out. I don't know, how long are they out? Seven years, eight years, whatever. And plenty of people since that time have said, no, I don't have any problem storing my inks right side up. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't put it on upside down anyway. I probably would. But uh, this way always seems to stick in my brain as, should I have really done this? Um, you know, do I look crazy with all my inks upside down? That's, you know, doesn't seem normal. But if you've been crafting a, a while, I know you read that somewhere too. I know you heard that somewhere too. I um, once saw... I think it was totally Tiffany who said that uh, she once had her inks stored sideways and it leaked all over the place. Ah, here we are. Distress outside, rustic wilderness on all four sides. So we made it happen. And it would be lovely if we were done, but we are not done. We are not done at all. Let's see if we could take our foam, take the open fasteners, and uh, which side goes here? Yep, this one. You just stick your foam dot and stick your Velcro on your foam dot will be secure. Okay, this can finally be put away. What a relief. There you go. Bye-bye. Now, this guy, I am just going to add a label to him. Same thing, I take off one side. Put it down. Take off the other side. And these are even less perfect in that organizer you'll see when I open it up 
and then I'll pull up the rest of the release and my swatch is labeled. So here we go with the swatch book. This aside and find my greens. Green, green. These are my greens. I think we should go right about here. Try to keep some empty spaces so I don't have to move these around all the time. And it could have been that we belong here. Now that I see it, and every time I go to pick out an ink, I start rearranging these things again, so I'm not gonna be too fussy, but finally, done. There it is, the swatching and um, labeling of one ink. So, over a half an hour. Oh my goodness, I can't even believe myself. This is ridiculous. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this system because I think I'm crazy. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the content. Please leave a comment below. Thumbs up if you like it. Green thumb. <laughs> well, I don't really have a, I have a brown thumb, but I'm going to clean this green thumb. And um, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, and please subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Have a great day, and above all, everybody, stay safe. Bye-bye, YouTube.